You mean to tell me there was only one witness to this whole thing? Only one we could find who had a clear view of what happened. Detective, this is a residential street. Yeah, well, what about other traffic? There wasn't any. The lady's car was the only one in the street. Yeah, well, how about a pedestrian? I mean, somebody could have been crossing against the light. She might have swerved to avoid hitting them. That's not what the witness said. There was nobody else around. She just hit the bridge stanchion. You mean she just lost control and cracked it up? That's how it looks to me. Maybe there's something wrong with the car. Or maybe there's uh, something wrong with the driver. I want to see my daddy. We'll see him later. I'll let you know if there are any further complications. Thank you. <sighs> Derek, are they going to take much more time? Can't they tell us what's happening? It's more important for them to be in there doing everything they can. Yeah, I guess so. Raven, please don't get any false hopes up. I tried to be straight with you before. Oh, God. She ran her car straight into the bridge abutment. I just don't know how it could have happened. She always said she was such a good driver. These things just happen. Is Mrs. Scott's daughter here? Yes, this is... Is she okay? You were told that she sustained numerous and severe injuries during the car crash. Yeah, but she's going to be all right, isn't she? We did everything we could to save her. But it was a really rough battle. She died only moments ago. She's dead. I'm very sorry. Going to stay with her? Yes, I'll stay with her. I can't believe this. I'm going to go find no, her. No, You want to set it? Did you want me to get the dog? No, before? I don't want to set it, Tim. I want my mother. Derek, I'm not ready for this. I know. I know. I just left her a few hours ago. She was in my apartment. And I never should have let her go. She shouldn't have been driving. Raven, come on. You can't change the past. I just didn't think when I said goodbye to her it would be for the last time. Look, did she take any drugs before she left? I don't think so. So that she might have gotten from the hospital. You know, there are some kinds of drugs you shouldn't take when you're driving. I don't know. You two were pretty worked up emotionally. It must have been some fight. No, it wasn't. We didn't fight. I mean, we had arguments like mothers and daughters, but I loved my mother and she loved me. Okay, forget I said it. I'm sorry. She was a very sick woman. And they forgot something. She should never have left the hospital. The, the doctors must have missed something. She was probably weakened by several days in bed and her senses were dull. I know. That must have been it. She must have just lost control of the car. But it really doesn't matter. She's gone. And now I don't have any family. I'm all by myself. Want some coffee or something? No, I don't want anything. Thank you. I came as soon as I heard. I... I just can't tell you how sorry I am. I appreciate your concern. Is there anything I can do? Can you stay with Raven? Well, of course. I think I better get back to the scene of the accident. I want to find out just what happened and why. Well, go on ahead. I'll look after her. Stay calm. You'll be all right. Thank you. If I hear anything important, I'll let you know. I can't believe this is happening to me. It's going to be a rough time for you. I'm surprised you came. Ma, I thought you should have somebody. Yeah, I feel pretty alone right now. I don't have anybody anymore. 
Well, you have, you have friends, you have other family. I have my little boy, and you keep trying to take him away from me. Raymond, I don't think this is the time or the place to discuss Jamie. I'm sorry. But the world seems like a very hostile place to me now, and I really don't have anyone to turn to. You're a very strong, very self-sufficient woman. If you put your mind to it, you will come through this just fine. I'm not as strong as you think. And I really did rely on my mother. Did you? Really? Yes, I did. Maybe not in the literal sense. But she was always there. Even though there was thousands of miles away in London. Oh, God. What's the matter? Ansel doesn't know. I wonder if it's too late to call him, although I don't know what I'd say. If you like, I'll telephone him. Would you? That's very nice. It's not just Anne's, although I have to tell other people. I have to make funeral arrangements. If you want, I will take care of everything. And why would you want to do that? Somehow at a time like this, our differences just don't seem all that important, and there's no reason for you to have to deal with these unpleasant details. Uh, okay. <laughs> I should have known you would help me. We really did have some good times, didn't we? But if there's anything that I can do, just say the word. I, uh, I really would like to get out of here. I'd like to go home. Well, I've got my car downstairs. Come on, I'll take you. Looking out the window, waiting for my husband to come home. He's an hour late from work and he never calls. I saw the whole thing. Exactly what did you see? I, the car turned onto Jefferson Avenue from Spring Street. It was going right down like it was minding its own business. All of a sudden, it veers off right into that pole. Kaboom! You know what I mean. That's when I called the emergency number for you guys. Exactly uh, how fast would you say the car was going? Well, not fast at all. It, it certainly wasn't speeding. Before the car hit the pole, was it swerving, or did the, car, the driver appear to be in control? Well, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary happening until it went smack into that pole. Was there anybody else in the front seat with the driver, or, or was there anybody else on the street? I didn't notice anybody getting out of the car, and, and there wasn't a soul on the street. I tell you, it was as if that woman drove straight for the pole, as if she wanted to hit it. Why would somebody do that? Oh, well, you're asking the wrong person. I'm a housewife, not a psychiatrist. Calvin, I think that we ought to talk to Raven about this, and she's probably the last person who saw her mother alive. You're yeah, probably right. you found out so far. Oh, uh, Chief, look. Uh, Mrs. Wentworth, look, we'd like to talk to you a little bit later. Don't go away, okay? I'll be in my house anytime you want me, okay? I'm trying to keep my husband's dinner from burning. He's probably out drinking with the boys. Take care. Chief, how did Raven take the news? taking you pretty badly. Huh? All right. What happened out here? How'd this car get this way? Well, look, Chief, as far as we can tell, I mean, Mrs. Scott just lost control of the car and cracked it up. It's the only moving vehicle in the vicinity. Nobody ran her off the road. David insists her mother was a good driver. Well, even so, she must have had a pretty bad night. I mean, the, the street is obviously bone dry and there, there are no traces of any skid marks. I didn't go into a skid? No, obviously also. There's um, no obstacles for her, to try, for her to have tried to avoid hitting. What are you trying to say? She did this on purpose? Well, look, we don't have any facts to back up anything. Well, get some facts. I want to know why this woman died. She's off, Chief. We're doing the best we can. I mean, all we can do right now is speculate, you know? She could have fallen asleep and her hand could have slipped off the wheel. All uh, right, we can't discount the possibility of mechanical failure either. Yeah, well, as soon as I get this heat dragged into the police garage, I'll uh, have it gone over from top to bottom. What I've heard, my guess is he probably had a stroke or a heart attack. There's something else we're going to have to do, too. What's that? We're going to have to order an autopsy. Hi, Mrs. Crist. Ah, uh, Mrs. Crist, hi. Hi, 
Yes, Jamie. Oh, not a peep out of him. No trouble at all since you left. Good, good. I'm glad he wasn't any trouble. Uh, Mrs. Swift, uh, I was listening to the radio and I, I heard the news about your mother. I'm awfully sorry. Thank you. It's a terrible thing. If there's anything I can do. I'll take care of Jamie now so you can go. Oh, okay. Just enough? Oh, sure, thanks. Well, I'll call Ansel. I think I'll go take a look at Jane. Okay. Yes, Alfred, I'd like to make an overseas call, London, England. This will be person to person to Mr. Ansel Scott. That's A N S E L. Thank you. be sad, okay? Because that makes you a very, very rich little boy. Yeah. 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 You still don't know why Nadine Scott's car wound up wrapped around that bridge abutment. No, unfortunately, we don't have any more facts, only more speculation. We can give you three possible choices. A mechanical defect in the car. Except, now, the, the guy at the rental agency swears he can produce mechanical records that prove that the car was in perfect condition. She could have been a bad driver, oh. not looked where she was going. And went 50 feet out of her way to smash into that thing. Now. Well, maybe she was distracted. Could consider suicide. Oh, that's ridiculous. She couldn't be sure about ending it all that way. People that commit vehicular suicide, they, they go off cliffs, things like that. Well, Chief, you know, I still think that your first idea makes the most sense. I mean, she probably had some sort of a seizure, a heart attack or stroke, something like that. And that is why Calvin and I both think we must have an autopsy. You never know what we might find. Time. Well, 
sorry, that was stupid. This must be a terrible time for you. Yeah. You've heard about the accident? Yes. All right. Once you know how sorry I am, it was a terrible tragedy. Thank you for your concern. Well, good night. I uh, thought we might discuss some business. Now? Now, you know that I wouldn't indulge you at a time like this unless it was important. It'd only take a few minutes. Well, can't we talk about it in court? That's exactly what I want to talk to you about. When we meet in court. <sighs> well, if I'm not mistaken, the proceedings are supposed to begin in about three days. Well, I, uh, I thought you might want a postponement. Why would I want that? To get over the initial shock of your mother's death. What has happened makes me want to get this thing over with as soon as possible. The sooner the better. I, I, I thought you were all hepped up about putting this off. I mean, at least you were before tonight. Cliff, it's just me and Jamie now. That's why I want possession as soon as possible, because I want to make sure that Jamie is right here with me forever. Well, don't you want some time to you know, handle the details of your mother's funeral? Well, yes, yes, actually, um... I should let a little time pass in deference to my mother. Just uh, make it fast, okay? That's a very wise decision. I'll uh, handle the postponement with uh, your lawyer. Thank you, Cliff. You know, Raven, you could do yourself a big favor and call off these proceedings altogether. What? Oh, no, you're in a very bad time now. You know, the, the best thing you could do would be to hand Jamie back to Logan before the court takes him back from you. No! Be reasonable. With April's testimony and the case we have against you for abandonment, we have you dead to rights. Why go through the emotional strain of a court trial when you know you're going to lose in the end? Who put you up to this? Did Logan send you here or was this your idea? Raven, I just want you to avoid as much heartache as possible. How dare you? How dare you come in here and try to take advantage of my vulnerabilities? To manipulate me to give up my kid. That was not my intention at I all. I should report you to the Bar Association. You're trying to take advantage of me, and I've just had a death in the family. Surely that's unethical. Unethical? Look, I'm just trying to help. Cliff, I... <laughs> Look, I want to make something very, very clear. There is going to be a custody trial, and I am going to win. Logan is not going to take my baby away from me. Well, with all due respects, dear, that remains to be seen. My mother is gone, and I will move heaven and earth to keep my son. So, Mr. Nelson, you can just go tell your client that I am more determined than ever to keep my son. Well, your determination is not going to change the facts. Don't look so confident about this case, Mr. Hotshot Lawyer, because you're in for a very rude awakening. Well, facts are facts, and they happen to be on our side. <laughs> well, you can just keep your facts, because I have the judge on my side. Oh, yeah. you really think so, huh? Yes. The judge usually awards custody to the mother. And if you don't think that he's going to be particularly sympathetic in this case... You're very wrong, and no, he's no, no. crazy. You are crazy Why now. don't you just go tell Logan that he should give up this custody case because he is wasting his time. Are you kidding? Logan would never, ever do that. Who is it? It's Deborah Saxon, Raven. Great, another one of my favorite friends. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I could. Why does everyone want to talk to me now? Why can't you just leave me alone with my grief? Believe me, I am not here to upset you. Cliff, what are you doing here? Well, you're on business. Don't get excited. And I'm finished. I'm leaving now. Good night, Cliff. Thanks for dropping by. I really am sorry about your mother. Good night. Good night. You have my sympathies as well. I want you to know that. Yeah. What else do you want? Well, I'd like to ask you one little question, then I'll be on my way. All right. What is it? Will you grant permission to have an autopsy performed on your mother's body? What? Now, I know it's asking a lot, and this is a bad time, but it's very, very important. Why? It's the only way we can come up with an explanation as to the cause of the accident. 
took your mother's life. Forget it. Absolutely not. Don't you want to know why she lost control of the car? Not particularly. It's not going to give her back her life. At least give it some thought, Raven. No! If you think I'm going to let you and your morbid friends get your jollies by cutting up my mother, you are crazy. I wouldn't ask you this unless it was absolutely necessary. All I want is a little peace for my mother. And I would like a little peace myself. It has been a particularly trying day. So if you will excuse me. Why don't we talk about this again in the morning when you're less No! Upset? I said N-O. Can't you understand that? Now, will you please leave? Raven, don't Good fight night, me on this. detective. There will be an autopsy performed. Over my dead body. Consent of next of kin is the simplest way of getting an autopsy performed, but it's not the only way, Raven. Good night. for a while? Mommy. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, look, the first thing that you're going to buy your mommy when you get to be a millionaire is a pair of mink earmuffs, okay? Okay, here. Sit down. There you go. Here's something to eat. Hi. Hi, dear. Hello, Raven. It's nice of you to come over. Raven, I'm truly sorry about what happened to your mother, but I'm not here on a sympathy call. Well, then what are you here for? I want an explanation for what you did this morning. What did I do? You had your mother's body cremated. So soon after she passed away, you must have set a record. I had a very unpleasant task to perform, and I wanted to do it as soon as possible. Why didn't you tell anybody what you were going to do? I made the decision after consulting the only person that matters, my mother's husband, Ansel. Mother had said several times in the past that that's what she wanted done with her body, so I confirmed it with him, and then I did it. Then this wasn't just a... Uh momentary decision on your part? Logan was sitting there the whole time listening to the conversation. As a matter of fact, he's the one that put the call through, and if you don't believe it, you just go ask him. All right, look, I'm... I'm sorry if I upset you. Especially since nothing can be done about it. My mother has been dead less than a day, and the man that I care about more than anybody in the world comes over here and gives me a lot of trouble. Now, what did I do that was so terrible? You stymied an investigation that I had just initiated. Well, that's too damn bad. You should have told me what you were going to do. I didn't know I needed your permission. Disposing of your mother's body in that manner has placed you and me in a very awkward position. I don't see how. Your mother's death is still a question. You have now made finding an answer to that impossible. I am trying to get through a very painful situation. I think a little compassion would be in order. I am concerned about you, damn it. Don't you see what you did may well focus even more attention on your mother's death? There was a tragic car accident. That's all there was to it. I didn't say any different. Well, who did? Don't tell me. I think I know. Deborah Saxon girl detective. Why don't you just tell that red-headed detective of yours to let me and my mother rest in peace? You will have to admit this accident had some unusual aspects. What, for instance? A car crashes into a steel pillar on an empty street on a crystal clear night for no apparent reason. There was a very apparent reason. My mother obviously had a terrible seizure. I talked to your mother's physician. She wasn't all that sick. Well, I'm sorry, but that must have been what happened. Don't you see an autopsy would have ascertained that for us? You're not going to get your autopsy, Derek, so will you please stop picking on me? The issue is closed, isn't it? Well, I would like the issue to remain closed permanently. <sighs> I've got no choice but to put a lid on it, huh? I wish you'd put a lid on Deborah Saxon's mouth. Don't worry about her so much. She hates me. I swear she spends her nights trying to think of things to upset me. She conducted this investigation the way she thought best, and that's all. Derek, Derek, please. I just want some time to mourn my mother. Is that too much to ask? Oh, I'm sorry. Of course not. Mr. Chief of Police, if Deborah Saxon continues to hound me, I'm going to have to sue her and the whole police department. <laughs> Yes, hello. Mr. Peabody. Oh, yeah, sure, put it through. It's uh, a long-distance call, family business. All right, I better get back to headquarters. Again, I'm sorry about what happened to your mother. If you need anything, you call me. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Yes, Mr. Peabody. I've been trying to reach you for hours. I'm returning your call as soon as possible. Mrs. Swift, would you mind telling me what's so urgent? Yes, I have some very tragic news. My mother, Nadine Scott, died last night. Mrs. Scott is dead? How dreadful. As her lawyer, I thought you should be informed. Well, I knew she wasn't feeling well and went to the States in the hope of effecting a cure. Well, Mother was killed in an automobile accident, ironically enough. Well, my sympathies to you, Mrs. Swift. Your mother was a, was a lovely woman. Thank you. I'm heartbroken, needless to say. Um, has Mrs. Scott's husband been notified? I'd be happy to take care of that if you'd rather not deal with No, 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 no. Ansel has been informed. As a matter of fact, the urn containing her ashes should be sent later today. Then I suppose I'd better begin the execution of her will. Well, I guess that would be the thing to do. Um, Mrs. Swift, you, you do realize that your mother had some changes made in a will several months ago, that you're no longer mentioned in it? Yes, I know. In case you have any intention of initiating litigation to contest the document, Mrs. Swift, I feel it incumbent upon me to tell you that the way the changes were made would make it virtually impossible for you to defeat her wishes. I have no intention of trying to defeat her wishes. You're making my job very easy for Mrs. Swift. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I would like to ask one favor, though. Well, insist upon it, Ashley. I'm more than willing to accommodate any reasonable request. I know that many of Mother's bequests were made to charities and certain institutions, and my mother was not particularly publicity conscious, so I would like the contents of the will to be confidential. Oh, have no fear, Mrs. Swift. We'll be very discreet. No one will know the contents who is not personally involved. Wonderful, wonderful. You've made me feel much better. If there's anything I can do, please contact me. Thank you, Mrs. Swift. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, Jamie, everything is going as smooth as silk. And pretty soon, you are going to be Jameson Swift, millionaire. And since a little boy like you doesn't know how to deal with the world of high finance, well, Mommy will just have to help you. Show you how to spend your money. Of course, you realize now that Mother has died, everything has changed. Yes, I'm sure it has. For one thing, there's no longer any question about Jamie's inheritance, is there? Your mother didn't change her will. No, she didn't change the will. Jamie does not have to wait till he's 21 to get his money. And when will he get his little bundle from London? Well, it's going to take a while. The will has to be probated and all that. I see. So I, I think you have rather mixed emotions at the present. No, I don't. I have only one emotion. I feel awful. I loved my mother. Oh, yes, of course you did, darling. I spoke to her solicitor in London, and uh, he's going to take care of everything. Right now, there's only one thing that I'm worried about. Oh, I didn't know you feared anything, Superwoman. You know exactly what it is. Oh, I do? Let me guess. Is it animal, vegetable, mineral? How many guesses do I get? It's definitely animal. It's you, you beast. Me? How can I pose any threat to you? Why don't you just use your brain? Although I know it's rusty from inactivity. <sighs> I see what you mean. You mean that silly letter of yours I have in my possession? Yes, I want it in my possession. You do? Oh, well, I think uh, our relationship has been so much better since I have that letter in my safekeeping. I'd be very hard put to let it go. Everyone has their price. You can't afford me, darling. I have an offer to make you. A 12-year-old bottle of scotch won't do it. Raven. I have a better offer than that. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of those proverbial offers that you can't refuse. The minute I get my first money from London, I will give you $10,000 in cash if you give me that letter right now. But if you uh, lose the custody trial? I'm not going to lose. I have everything going for me. I am the kid's mother. The social worker came in here and thinks I'm wonderful. The court is sympathetic to me. Because now I'm grieving for my mother, they're certainly not going to take away my baby. So you have everything, Raven, except the letter. You wouldn't want to see me lose this case now, would you, darling? Of course not, darling. So? Is it a deal? Let me think about it. What is there to think about? Why do you need that letter? I just enjoy possessing it. That's all. Well, you would enjoy money a lot more. Listen, we'll talk about this when we see each other, okay? Look, Elliot, I don't know when we're going to see each other. I mean, I can't very well go to the Unicorn and Disco when I'm in mourning, and uh, I really don't want you around here. Or what do you say we have lunch somewhere? Or maybe just a cup of tea? Uh, a cup of tea, huh? Yes, yeah, so what do you think? When do you think it can be arranged? 
Raven, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Look, I don't know when it can be arranged, and um, I really don't want to talk to you anymore right now. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye-bye. You're trying to tell me that I didn't care for you as a child? Maybe you did a little bit, till Daddy died. No. That wasn't true. Yes, it is. I always felt you blame me for Daddy's death. It was the other way around. You hated me after he died. Oh, he adored you so much. Too much. You always felt the... the wrong. The parent died. How can you think that? I was only six years old. You have no idea how Daddy's death affected me. And I needed you. And you weren't there for me. Raven, I... I tried to take his place. I I... didn't want you to take his place. I wanted you to take your place. I wanted you to be the mother you never were. And that's why Daddy spent so much time with me, because you were never there. You were always out with your friends or charities. I'm uh, afraid your memory is faulty at those days. How could you possibly remember that age? I remember every moment. I remember every lonely moment of the year my daddy died. And I remember how you sent me to that school. I was seven years old when I did that. That's right. I was seven years old. Old enough to take care of myself in the world, wasn't I? Oh, for heavens, don't... Don't cry I'm not crying. Raven, you mustn't think that I didn't love you. When your father died, it... uh, It was a great loss to me, and I, I... I couldn't handle it. Perhaps I, uh, perhaps I, I did neglect you. I'm sorry, Raven. I really am. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm so sorry. Elliot, the utter gall. How could they do something like that? I'll sue them. I've heard of people suing the police department. You're not being very coherent, darling. Just uh, what terrible thing did the police do to you? They called my mother's lawyer in London. Do you believe that? Oh, I can believe it. I'm just not sure I understand it. They called them to find out about the will. They wanted to know what's going to happen to mother's money now that she's dead. That sounds reasonable. It's unreasonable. And it's dirty. It was an accident. The medical coroner said it was an accident. What else could it have been? Do I get three guesses? It's obvious what they're implying by asking about the money. They're implying that there was foul play. (laughs) Foul play. I love that phrase, don't you? It still sounds like it comes out of some Victorian melodrama. I hate it. And I'm not going to let her get away with it. Who? Deborah Saxon. I'm sure it was her idea to call London. She would like nothing better than to prove that I had something to do with Mother's death. And of course you hadn't. Of course I didn't. Why would I want to hurt my one and only living relative? Don't forget Jamie. Oh, not that you would, considering his newfound wealth. Well, thank God Mr. Peabody had the sense not to tell them that Jamie inherited everything. Mr. Peabody being the solicitor? Yes. I'm lucky he was discreet. Uh, So very British. Oh, I'm going to get her. (laughs) I'm going to get her good. Darling, if you don't mind me saying so, I think you should emulate Mr. Peabody and be a bit more discreet in this matter. Why should I? Why shouldn't I get her for this innuendo? It was slander. She hasn't really accused you of foul play, darling. She's just trying to find out if 
anyone had the motive to kill the poor lady. That's what the police normally do. Not in the case of an accident, Elliot. She wants to see me in jail. She hates me, and she has for years. However, I just might take your advice. I won't get her yet. What are you thinking of doing? I'm going to be very cooperative. I think I'll call her up and go over there and tell her that I know nothing about the will except for one thing. I don't get a bloody scent. And poof, there goes my motive for foul play. Until she finds out about the baby. I'm sick and tired of your innuendos. One of these days, if you don't watch out, you're going to be very sorry. <laughs> to find a situation totally unacceptable. I'm sorry, Elliot, but there's nothing you can do about it. I'm not buying any of that it's a woman's prerogative things tonight. Why can't you meet me here? Because I have things to do, and one of them does not consist of sitting here on the phone explaining my life to you. Well, then I'll meet you at your apartment. <sighs> okay, Elliot, um, I have to pass. Raven, we've had ten minutes together in the last few weeks. A lot is happening. This is hardly a healthy way for our relationship to blossom and grow, you know. I miss you, Raven. Damn it. I want to see you. I miss you too, baby, but believe me, what I'm doing now takes prerogative over everything else. We seem to have a different set of priorities. <sighs> look, I have to go. I'll talk to you. Well, look who's here. Good evening, gentlemen. It was. What are you doing using a police phone? Making a call. You can't come in here and just do whatever you like. You're uh, not at home now, Rick. I didn't do anything wrong. So who died and made you queen? This police department is part of the municipal government, is it not? Well, isn't that funny? I didn't remember a civics lecture being on the evening schedule. As a taxpayer, I don't need permission to use a phone that I help pay for. And I also help pay for you civil servant salaries. So I'd appreciate a little respect. Raven, what do you want? I want to talk to you, both of you, about something that just might cost you your job. I wanted to speak to you alone, Deborah, but you two must be working as a team. Sometimes. So you're obviously working as a team on this disgraceful investigation. Raven, what are you talking about? Perhaps investigation isn't the right word. I think the right word is vendetta. Look, if you'll excuse me, I've got reports to type. Go ahead. But you might as well type up your resignation along with it, because that's what's going to happen if you continue this. Raven, what is your problem? You know very well what my problem is. You are doing everything you can to show that I was responsible for my mother's death. Oh, now hold it. Somewhere along the line, lady, you got your signals all crossed. Look, if you're talking about a routine investigation of your mother's You ass... called my mother's lawyer in London and asked about the contents of her will. Well, that's no secret. Why do you care who she gave her money to? It's a routine question we ask in cases where a cause of death can't be confirmed. You see, sometimes people get impatient waiting for their inheritance. Well, if that's what you want to know, I'll make your job easy. I don't get a cent. Oh, is that a fact? Yes, that's a fact. Has the will been read yet? No, it hasn't been read, but it will be to Ansel, and you'll see I know what I'm talking about. Now, what reason would your mother have for cutting you completely out of her will? My mother and I did not get along. My mother announced publicly that I would continue to get my allowance, that father left me, but my name was not mentioned when it came to her bequest. Very interesting. Yeah, thank you for the information. We uh, come across any more information regarding your mother's death, we'll be sure to keep in touch. You won't come across any more information concerning me. But believe me, this is my last warning, and I am not kidding. If you continue to stick your noses where they don't belong, I will sue this whole police department, and you might end up civilians again. Good night, Mr. Swift. Have a safe trip home, and do drive carefully. I'm not making an idle threat. Whatever you say, Raven. Better watch it, Deborah. You know, you have a lot to lose. If you get kicked off the police force, you might have to start acting like a woman again.
frustrated day Pass will outside the 